Hello, I'm Butch Curry from Zombie Divina Games. Welcome to the ninth episode of Fantasy Cartography with Adobe Photoshop, the podcast where I share my favorite tips, tricks, and techniques to help you create cool maps for your role-playing games. I apologize for not putting up my last two Photoshop tips of the week. It's been a pretty busy time here at Zombie Nirvana, as I've been trying to complete the Fantasy Cartography book, as well as working on a map commission. If time permits, I'll try to do something special this week to make up for it. Now let's get started. As you can see, I've already added the rest of the buildings to this map, using the technique we discussed in the last episode. This week, we're going to talk about text. Here you can see I've already added some basic text labels, nothing fancy there. Uh, but as you can see, a couple of them are kind of hard to read. There are a couple of ways you can fix that. One that you've probably seen before would be to add a highlight around the text to make it more readable. The easiest way to do that is just to go to your text layer, double click on it to bring up the layer styles, there we go, and then add an outer glow. And you can see right away that makes that text a lot more readable. For some maps, this technique can work really well. But in this map, in particular, we're trying to mimic a hand-drawn style. So it's not really appropriate. So we'll just cancel out of that. What we really want to do is try to take away some of the stuff that's behind it uh, in such a way that it looks like it was done by the person who is drawing this map by hand. So what we're going to do is we're going to come down here to the tree layer. Uh, we're going to work on this black bear forest here first. Uh, and we're going to come down here to this uh, layer mask that we created way back when we put these trees in in the first place. And you see one of the advantages of using a layer mask in the first place. I'm just going to zoom in over here. And I'm going to grab a brush. I'm going to use one of my watercolor brushes. Here we go. Brushes. There we go. Uh, this one will work just fine. I'm going to lower the size, switch the color to black because I want to mask some of the trees here. I'm going to reduce the opacity because I want to do this just a little bit at a time. And I'm just going to go in here and just mask out some of the forest. I don't want to remove it completely. I'd like to leave just a little bit of it showing through. So I'm just going to go through a little at a time until we can really see that text pop out. Just like that. Now I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing on the color layer underneath it. This one doesn't have a layer mask yet. We can just add one just like that. And then just go in and mask out just a little bit of the color just to let some of that paper background show through. Now we'll zoom back out, see how it looks. That looks pretty good. Now we can actually see that text and really read it. Uh, but it's still, you can still see some of the uh, forest showing through. Now we can come through here to the lake layer, right here, and just do the same thing there. Just grab the brush and mask out some of the lines here that we put in in our lake a couple of episodes back. And there's a real easy way that you can allow your text to show through very naturally without having to use that outer glow layer style which isn't always appropriate for maps like this. One other thing that I can do while I'm working on this lake layer mask is the same effect that I did on the tree layer mask up here around the edges, back when I first put it in. I'm going to zoom in here just a bit. I'm going to keep the same watercolor brush uh, that I was using to mask out the lines back here. I'm just going to work my way around the edge here and just kind of mask out a little bit around there as well. And that's going to give me this effect here of kind of fading around the edges. That's what I'm really looking for. So I'm just going to come around real quick, uh, maybe even bring up the opacity a bit more to speed things up. And again, if I accidentally go too high, I can always 
switch the color back to white by hitting X, maybe bring the opacity down just a bit, and kind of bring those lines back in if I need to. Switch back to black, give it another run around the edge, just like that. And I'll do the same thing on the roads layer here. Just kind of mask that out a little bit around the edges. If you're wondering how I'm moving around so quickly, I actually am using a Wacom tablet, uh, but I have the click set for it to the space bar so that uh, I can just click on it and get the hand and just move around the drawing really quickly. I found that to be uh, a real time-saving tip for myself. There we go, just like that. Now we have all of our elements added. We have our natural elements, the trees and the lake. We have our man-made elements, the roads and buildings. And we have our text labels added. Now we're really getting into the home stretch. Next episode, we're going to talk about a really interesting topic, uh, displacement maps. There's a lot of confusion that folks seem to have about displacement maps, about how to actually use them and what they do. So next week is going to be all about displacement as we go through and really make this map uh, look like it was hand-drawn on this old ragged piece of paper. That's going to do it for this week. If you're watching the show on iTunes, don't forget to leave a review and let everyone know what you think of the show. Stop by ZombieNirvana.com for this week's show notes, my almost weekly Photoshop tips, and for the latest news on my upcoming fantasy cartography book. Until next time, thanks for listening, and happy mapping. Will you go, Lassie, will you go?